Take a look at this simple form I have here. So we have email and we have password. Now let's say we enter an invalid email. You can see we get this shaky effect and then we have this text not a valid email and let's say we enter a password that doesn't match the expected requirements oh this actually matches it let's do something like this okay now we have this shaky effect and then we get digits or letters minimum eight characters and this is not up to eight what if i told you that there is no javascript involved in this this is just html and css well in this video i'm going to be showing you how i achieved this and the goal of this is to teach you some html and css tips so let's get into it okay so we're going to be starting from this if i pass an invalid email format here we don't get any error so let's look at the code first off I have my color invalid custom element and I pass this value and also I have a color valid custom property by the way if you'd love to learn what box sizing is and why I'm doing box sizing border box I published a video on this yesterday and I'll leave a link in the video description you can check it out as for the body I have this style here and this image here is coming from on splash which is this and then let's go to the HTML briefly so for the HTML I have my form and then I have my input group in this input group I have an input I have a label and I have a span for the input this is the class ID type for the label this is the class and this label is for the ID email and then I have this span which says not a valid email and we'll come to this in a second now for the other input group I have my input for password and here I have this pattern and this pattern is a regular expression pattern which means means either letters or digits repeated a minimum of eight times and a maximum of infinity i have a course on regular expressions which i'll also link below i recommend you check out that course so that you can understand patterns like this or create even more advanced patterns and then i have this label and then i also have this span where i say digits or letters minimum eight characters then i have my submit button here this is the style for the form i have this background filter blow one pixels where you can see a bit of the background but it is blurred out and I also have color mix one of my favorite functions in CSS for mixing color so I mix white and a transparent of 20% but let's go down to more interesting stuff by the way if you also love to learn how I do this thing where you click on the input the label goes to the top you stop focusing it comes down I have a video on that also I'll link below so yeah I have all of these styles for my inputs group input and the rest of them now let's go back to the HTML for the HTML you can see we have a type email this means that when we type an invalid email format and we try to submit the browser will be able to trigger an error or a notification that says please include an ad in your email but if i enter something like a at a.com even though this may not be a valid email but since the format here is correct we no longer get that error and if i should scroll down to the password for this password i have this pattern here so now if i enter something of five characters and i try to submit we get this error again please match the requested format because this does not match this pattern now while the browser throws these errors it also puts the input in an invalid state and in CSS we have an invalid pseudo class which we can use to style the input differently when it is invalid so coming back here you can see that the input error is also visibility hidden by default right so if I should remove that you can see it's now showing here let me continue hiding it so coming here we can do something like input group input if the input is in an invalid state then we can apply some styles so now we can say border one pixel solid and then we use the custom color invalid property now if I come here and I enter an invalid email you can see we already have our border let me make this border two pixels if I enter an invalid email you can see now we have a border of red but it doesn't make sense that this is already red while the user is still typing so what I can do is if the input is not in focus using the not pseudo class and it is in an invalid invalid state then we apply this so now if I refresh if you are typing a wrong email you don't get anything but once it is no longer in focus you now see it becomes red and then using this same idea we can now do something like input group input not in focus and it is invalid then we're going to select the input group error and this input group error here is for the span and by using this symbol here we're selecting this input group error that comes after the input and here 
here we can now do something like visibility visible now if i come here again i enter an invalid email format you can see we now have this not a valid email by the way this should also have a color invalid and now if we come here well now you see not a valid email for the password too if you enter a password that doesn't match the expected uh, format or the expected pattern we now get this span now showing below another thing we can do is to change the label such that the label becomes red well to do that we can repeat this again and by the way we're using normal css that's why there's a lot of repetitions but if you're using something like scss you won't be having so many repetitions so here we can select the input group label and this should also have a color of color invalid and it should also have a border color of color invalid now once you come here once you enter an invalid email the border of the label becomes red the text becomes red the input should also be red so i can add a color and also have my color invalid so now we're going to have a lot of red when something is wrong everything is now red but once you enter a valid email well we don't have any red everything is fine now let's have our shake effect which is going to give that you know something is wrong so when the input is invalid here i'm going to apply an animation which i'm going to call error shake and this should go on for 600 milliseconds that's the duration i'm also going to apply this animation on the input error when the input is invalid and for my animations to work i'm going to come to the input here create a custom left property and give this zero and then i can use this custom left property here i'm going to show you why we need this in a second and i'm also going to repeat this for the input error in fact i'm instead of repeating myself i'm just going to have input group input and then i have input group error and i'm going to move this to here and i also need position absolute for the left property to work well now that i have this for my animation error shake i can come here do keyframes error shake now what is the idea of this error shake well we're going to have zero percent twenty percent forty percent sixty percent eighty percent of the duration for zero percent of the animation i'm going to overwrite the left custom property with minus 10 pixels so that the input and the error goes to the left for 20 percent i want the left to be eight pixels so it goes from negative to positive for 40 percent i want the left to be minus six pixels so back to negative for 60 percent i want the left to be four pixels for 80 percent i want the left to be minus two pixels and i should also have a hundred percent where the left goes back to zero and now let's come back here oh no something is wrong what did i do wrong oh no this should have been position relative not absolute now we come here we enter an invalid email the input state is currently in invalid and once i stop focusing we now get that shake effect so once i stop focusing the error shake animation will be added to the input also added to the error you can see i'm selecting the error here and then we have this left right left right left right if i also enter a password that is not valid i also have that shaky effect now if i have a valid password well none of that shows if i have a valid email format well none of that also shows and you can see how i've been able to achieve this by using just html and css what is very important to know is that when you specify a type of email if a user enters something that is not a valid email format the input state will be invalid Valid. same thing for password here we specify type password and we also specify the pattern for that password so the input the user enters has to match this pattern else the input is going to be in an invalid state and then using that invalid state you can create these animations color everywhere red or just do something interesting that shows the user this isn't what we expected now of course you can achieve this with javascript and using javascript you can even make your error messages more dynamic but i hope that this video has shown you some css tips that you can apply in your web applications please give this video a like share with others and subscribe for more css demos like this